Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Big Jiu Jitsu Show, a member of the Pod Bros Podcast Network. Don't forget to go to podbros.com and find yourself another podcast you want to listen to. And don't forget to check out our sponsors, Trap and Roll Soap Company. Let me tell you something. I went on a trip to Africa not too long ago and I was in field condition. So I was in a tent, you know, sandy everywhere. Had kind of, you know, nasty water to bathe myself in. But what I used was Trap and Roll Soap and I felt amazing after. It was very clean, didn't get any you know nastiness on my skin it was great go find trap and roll soap and make sure you use it on yourself and don't forget to check out tape armor keeps your fingers safe it is the best tape i will argue that with anybody else and find all of our old episodes at bjjshow.com including we are now dropping a t-shirt it's called the jujitsu shirt you need it in your life let me tell you i know everybody has difficulties figuring out what shirt to wear like uh you know this one has skulls on it this one has a black belt on it you know this one has like you know a lego guy and a gi nah it just says jujitsu shirt might take all the guessing take all the thinking out of it just wear a jujitsu shirt don't forget also to go to itunes rate review us and subscribe and i hope you enjoy this episode it was with a uh, billy hong he is a cartoonist and he's been putting out some really awesome uh comics on instagram you can find him at immortal choke so hopefully you enjoy this episode and i'll talk to you guys later the uh was the move hard the move was yeah and it's like every single time i move i think it's going to be easier because i do everything to cut things down you know what i mean like i think as i get older i just get rid of more stuff. I sell more stuff. Um, my wife is kind of, <laughs> she, I give her a lot of shit cause she, she hoards a lot of stuff. She's like, Oh, well we might need to use this. We might need to use that. And then my thing is just like, just throw it away or, or like give it to somebody. But I mean, this time was like a total nightmare. Like we didn't even have enough stuff to, to need like a moving truck. Right. Like we could put it in like two compact cars, but on the, the like the day before we moved, my car broke down. Um, transmission wasn't working. So the night before, I had to actually get it towed onto a shipping truck. Oh, shit. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was like right after jujitsu class. So we're all like sweaty in our geese and trying to like, because I think normally these shipping trucks they and, and towing companies, they don't want to even deal with that. Like if you can't move your car, or like at least put it in reverse or something. But we had the guy out, and it took like four hours. <laughs> no. Damn, damn, damn. I'm yeah, sorry. it was sorry. It's a nightmare. <laughs> sorry to hear that. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, it's Rob, and I'm here with the very talented Billy Hong. Did I say that last name correctly? Just double check. You did. Hell yeah. You did. You know, that's two <laughs> podcast episodes in a row where I've, you know, people's names are good. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. he is an extremely talented individual. You may have seen his Brazilian jiu-jitsu comics floating around Instagram, now Facebook. Like I see him everywhere and finally got the source of who was writing them and making them and got him on the show. So, Billy, thanks for being on the show, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. So um, why don't you give us a little bit of backstory about uh, – I know you said you were a blue belt and you, we were just talking about you moving to Reno. Well, why don't you give us a little backstory on uh, your Brazilian jiu-jitsu journey? Yeah, so I actually – well, if we go like way back – um, I went to school in UC Davis and then shortly after I moved to San Francisco to work. And at that time, I think I just, I just wanted to get fit and I had always been doing powerlifting with my brothers. So I just, you know, looked at what, what I could do to just stay fit, but I like, keep it kind of fun. So yeah. I actually started, I would just do like Muay Thai in the morning. Um, and then they had Brazilian Jiu Jitsu classes and I just tried that out. And during that time, it was kind of just, you know, really off and on. I maybe train for a couple of days a week and then take two or three months off and then <laughs> train again. But um, eventually, when I got actually kind of more serious with it was when I moved down to Sunnyvale, California uh, for work. And I started training at Smash Gyms Sunnyvale under Michael Jen. And that would be the last two years of my life was training out of there. And 
recently because my uh, wife just got work in Reno, which happens to be where I grew up, Reno, Nevada. Nice. Yeah, we we just moved back here, and now we're training out of Charles Gracie. Well, I mean, you know, it's um, it's good that at least we're now to the point where even you know sometimes life takes us to really crazy places that there is a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu resources around that you just pick up and train pretty much anywhere depending on where you go. Yeah, it's good now, like, and especially coming from California, where I feel like it's a Jiu Jitsu mecca out there, man, like. You can come across so many legends and train under them over there. And I think, I mean, here it's definitely on the up and up. So it, the transition wasn't wasn't too hard, but yeah. Yeah, I do feel like, you know, it's either like a severe West Coast or a severe, like, I'm sorry, extreme West Coast or extreme East Coast type thing, finding a whole bunch of gyms in a very small area. But I do feel like there's, you know, some, I guess you call them flyover states, they're starting to pick up that way as well. Like, you know, mm-hmm. the Midwest has such a great grappling community as it is, and they got some really dangerous people out there as far as... Definitely. Yeah, they, they can, they can uh, put you in some very bad positions. And I don't know, maybe, like, th- with the spread of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I feel like you're going to get more uh, like more access, like you're talking about. You can go to San Diego, you can go to L.A., you can just you can throw a rock and hit five schools with an instructor who's just absolutely amazing. And then like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, even back home, I'm from kind of a country town in North Carolina, and there's a good four gyms, not, you know, within a rock's distance, but you can drive 10 minutes to them. Oh, yeah. And I think, like, it's also interesting the the way, like, if you look at the towns where a lot of the, the first gyms started, they're kind of just, you can see it's just like, oh, well, you know, it's cheaper to set up a gym there and whatnot. So yeah. definitely, I think, like, now, like, in the Midwest or whatever, you probably see that same trend. Like, it's just going to start out that way, but it's going to explode. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. And, um, so like I had said earlier, one of the main reasons I wanted to reach out to you and have you on the show is because you started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu comics and they're actually really like, um, they really do hit on kind of like the inner workings and the culture of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. What made you start doing that? I had actually been doing comics for a really long time, like way back to fifth grade. I remember I, it was like a way for me to kind of express myself like more naturally because I've always been like a pretty insecure person, I would say. <laughs> and like in fifth grade, like my, my, some of my best friends, you know, they would, they would be having their girlfriends, if you could call them that back then. And I would actually just like doodle up comics, um, kind of like poking fun at him or, or whatever, you know? So right that like I kind of that carried on through like college when I actually did comics for the university so it was in the university newspaper and during that time it was it was like a three panel comic and just kind of hitting on you know those typical college cliches of like frat life and all that kind of stuff and so that's where I kind of like stretch my legs if I look at those comics now they're it's like pretty cringy <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad I, I did it then before doing immortal choke right um but yeah so how it how it came to be was actually i had to thank my wife for this because she actually pushed me to to do something like this maybe a year ago and i was always like nah, no one's gonna care you know it's like yeah she's such a small community like it's it, it's it's gonna be like two people and you're gonna be one of them following the comic. <laughs> um but actually the how the format came about was that all the comics you see, it's actually I would leave my wife um post-its. Like because she usually goes to work before I wake up. So like if I made lunch for her or I need to remind her of something, I'd actually just draw a little comic. And that was like a way for her to to remember stuff or you know, just just to make things a little bit more fun. Yeah. Um, but then probably, I think like four months ago, some of my gym mates, when I was training over at Smash, they they started looking at um, some of the other comics I had done, the other web comics I had done um, on my Facebook. And they're like, you should do a jujitsu one. Right. And of course, like, you know, ignoring everything that my wife said for over a year, <laughs> I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. <laughs> I'm I'm going to do a comic. So it started off just like, just for my my teammates, you know, just and I, I just 
I think it started just posting on like the gym's Facebook page. And then another guy was like, hey, you should you should like get a website or something and put this up. And again, like, oh, it's like a little bit of a tangent. I, like professionally, I'm a graphic designer. Oh, wow. So so this is where like a lot of <laughs> some of the stuff gets in the way because I was like, dude, I just draw these on paper and then I, I take a picture of it with my iPhone. <laughs> like that's how I post it. And the designer in me was just like, this is unacceptable. You you cannot do this. <laughs> this is not refined enough. Like, and I kept giving him these excuses. He's just like, dude, just put something up. Like, it's good, you know? And I was like, no, I can't do this. Like, I, let me get like a, a Wacom tablet. Let me put it through Illustrator and like, you know, make it really polished and stuff. And I remember his response was like, I gave him this like long answer, right? And his response was like, all right, man. <laughs> and that kind of like stuck with me. So I was like, damn, he just... You know that he had nothing to say, so I was like, maybe there's there's no good reason for me not to. Right. So <laughs> I just kind of kept that format up, and and that's how it started. Like for a good two like two ish months, it was just it was just shot on my iPhone with like you know just maybe the fifteen twenty people from my gym following it. I mean, it's it is interesting to see like how obviously you you're exploding as far as popularity goes with these comics going like a lot of people's journey as far as doing something creative for the community and how it goes from like this very kind of like, you know, um, very small, very simple, not really, you know, not a lot of, I wouldn't say effort, but like refinement, like you talk about mm-hmm. goes into it, but the, but the intent is really good and the entertainment's really good. And it's really well thought out. Like I love seeing the progression of that as well. So like the more and more, we see it at the comics, you know, obviously they're hitting on stuff like um, the bug. Like nobody's, for some reason, I don't know why, <laughs> nobody's ever pointed this out. This always happens. Like there's always a bug in the gym for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always a different bug. It seems like every day. Yeah. But yeah, so like the, I guess the the basis of all these comics is it, it kind of goes back to my personality. Just kind of being, I'm more like a, a quiet laid back reserved person so in in most contexts like whether it's class or or work or whatever I'm kind of more in the background and I I just pay a lot of attention so the ideas for all these comics is really just that like internal dialogue or like those observations you make but you don't really think about it and I think that's kind of like the tone I I always wanted to hit. It's just like, especially when you first start out training and, you know, someone gets on top of you and you feel that huge pressure. It's like, oh, my lungs are collapsing right now. And then there's there's just just this like really quiet dialogue that happens that you don't really think about after. But it's just like in that moment, you're like, well, I'm going to die now. Like, this is it. (laughs) I might die right here. And so I I always try to like hit on, on those kinds of topics. No, and and you do a great job doing it. Like, like I said before the show, I was scrolling through it as well. Like the bug one really hit me, and then the band aid one really, really hit. Me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is so. You know, I've had experiences with gym partners. You know, sweating all over me, or accidentally getting some blood on my gi. But for why is it a band aid is so gross that we're like <laughs> just really willing to tap to whatever it is just to get away from it. Maybe it's because it's not, it's not fresh enough. You know? <laughs> it actually reminds me of a story. Like uh, I, I tried out um, Bikram yoga a long time ago. Yeah. Um, there, was, there was a Groupon for it or something. I didn't know what it was. But I showed up to class. Uh, well, I guess for anyone who doesn't know what it is, it's like 110 degrees, like 90% humidity, yeah. super hot yoga. Um, but I walked into class. I had my glasses on. And instantly they fogged up. And the instructor was like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Take those glasses off. <laughs> and then we, you know, we did some pose or whatever. And we were laying on the ground. And I was just trying to get air because it's so hot. So my mouth was open. And the instructor stepped over me. And a sweat drop just fell straight into my mouth. I tasted this guy. Oh, God. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. But, like, that's, that's, like, the kind of stuff that, that sticks with me <laughs> when I do things. So, you know. A lot of immortal choke is like that type of thing. I was gonna say like that, that's that's an understatement saying it sticks with you. That has like a life changing <laughs> in a terrible way experience. Yeah, it I mean, makes it fun. Though. 
Like <laughs> it does. I mean, I'd be a liar to say that it's never happened to me or, you know, I've had people throw up on me on accident, you know, just, wow. Yeah. I mean, just doing it in general, people like weird stuff happens. Nobody's shit their pants on the mats. Thank that. I know of that. I know <laughs> of nobody shit their pants on the mat where I am, but like, I don't know. Like it, it really does hit on it. And it's, so you're just pretty much taking your experience from being just training like the everyday stuff. And, um, does your wife train as well? Yeah, and that's the great thing is like, so the when she was trying to convince me to to put up a web comic, I was trying to convince her to go to jujitsu because she had tried it like a couple years ago, but it was kind of a weird scenario. I think it was like this this guy who was just kind of teaching like out of some sort of like twenty four hour type of yeah you know gym and she got paired up with like a three hundred pound white belt guy and she's tiny. You know, she's really small, and the guy ended up fracturing her rib. Holy shit. Yeah, so I was like, well, you know, like, what person in the right mind would pair you up with a 300-pound white belt who's probably, like, his first or second day? Yeah. And so it scared her for a long time. Um, but once we started training at Smash, like, I eventually got her to, to try it out, and she loved it because, you know, at least over there, it was, like, mostly smaller people, you know, people with families and stuff, so the vibe was was very different yeah and and that that's kind of a big thing i want to have in a jujitsu gym is a good vibe you know that's a very unfortunate incident that you know your wife in her first class like you know what 300 pound guy who second class this is work with this lady (laughs) teach her side control and whatever happens oh my god don't don't lose don't lose like yeah exactly you know, it's um we've had to change a rule out here. Like I'm now telling my guys, you have to have at least one stripe on the belt to spar from standing. Because we. Oh had, my god, um, that's such a good idea! Like, <laughs> I wish that was like standard. It, it you know, standing is a really important part of jujitsu, and you know, going from your knees is good because there's not a lot of, uh, I guess, like you you can still get injured, but there's a lot less chance of somebody getting tossed off the mat. Or, you know, somebody inexperienced. Um, we had an incident, and it was a complete accident. I watched it happen. It was not anybody's fault. It was the guy was doing a throw. The guy said, mm-hmm. oh, the best way to counter this throw is I'm going to run behind him and away from him. <laughs> and just add it into the throw. So he had, like, this perfect hip toss. And the dude landed hard and didn't break fall. And I was like... Oh, my God. Was like, so he's right. trying to, like, bullfight him, basically. Pretty much. He's like, I'll just... <laughs> I'll, if I if I keep turning towards his bat, you know, like helping him get this throw kind of in like in a way that he didn't know he was doing it and then just helped him throw him. And he's like, "Ooh, my, my ribs kind of hurt. And, you know, he has a military school coming up. So he like I get it. You know, it's not nobody was injured. It was just like we don't want to chance that. But right. Yeah. So that kind of, you know, we I like to at least think that we're not we're not out here to hurt new people. But I mean, and then like that causes such a bad experience for somebody it really can turn them off forever from even like setting foot on the mats yeah i mean my wife still gets a little like antsy when people go knee on belly just because it's like right on her rib Mm. so yeah Yeah. i mean some of that stuff's just gonna happen right so yeah it will i mean you know like there's not a day that goes by i'm sure you get banged up just as well you know yeah and you leave class and you question why the hell you're doing it and (laughs) Take some ibuprofen and relax. Yeah. So where do you see um, the future of the comic going? Do you you want to keep continue? Obviously, it's it's very good. So I hope you keep continuing it. But do you see it being more of a like maybe keep doing it more often or like what what what's your goal? What's your plan? Or where do you see yourself going with this comic? You know, I'm kind of just letting it evolve because. I what helps me at least creatively is like setting a lot of restrictions and I know like sounds kind of weird because you would think like if you're working with a creative person like the the best thing they would want is to go like oh just go nuts like just do whatever you want yeah but for me that that actually doesn't work like I actually work better under restrictions so that's why I made it a point to do this is going to be a daily comic and it's gonna just be the one panel yeah. And so like working with those restrictions, it, it lets me, it actually lets me be more creative. So, you know, I just started off with just like, oh, whatever jujitsu stuff comes to my mind, I'll just, I'll just draw that up. But as time's gone on, there's like, 
there's kind of s- smaller stories that start to happen and like different themes that kind of pop up and it it kind of like what what i want to kind of strive towards is like if you watch a show like portlandia yeah you know it's oh, like yeah two, love that show. yeah so this just like it's like two people but then they they play different characters and it's like there's like almost different worlds and then in the whole universe of portlandia right yeah. so um i really want to let the kind of characters develop so we have like the instructor with the lopsided eyes <laughs> <laughs> who who he like his thing is like he he kind of makes his he teaches his students like like a good instructor but some of the stuff he teaches is like all right so like you know you get in the arm bar and then and then tear your partner's arm off and then you know you can recycle them over in this bin over here like you know just kind of <laughs> crazy stuff like that and then i base like the the only female character i draw i'll try to draw more but i'm only good at one hairstyle right now no she's it's, she's it's ba- good. <laughs> she's based on my i'm my, my wife so you know she tells me her experiences and then i kind of base that off of that and so I just want to develop these things and then um, I'll have to do a little bit more of like there's the there's the tap news reporter, the jujitsu news. Yeah. Who will just report stuff like, oh, white, white belt died the other day because, you know, because he spazzed out or, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So I, I'm just kind of like organically letting these these stories and themes evolve. And then it actually makes the comic easier to write that way, you know, because you have defined characters, you have defined themes. Yeah, and and like I said before, it all hits on stuff we experience, like the reporter or, you know, for like everything. It doesn't matter the skill level. Everybody's going to experience it at some point. Or the instructor that says, yeah, no, it's cool. Just do that and just kill that guy. And <laughs> yeah. Somebody will be in to replace him. Don't worry about it. Somebody always signs up. And, you know, it's um, it's really just like a good medium reaches out to everybody. Like, you know, kind of mm-hmm. like an everyman type thing. And uh, this is definitely doing it for the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community. And I think, yeah, and I, think I really, really hope awesome. that it, I think you meant, I really hope that um, it starts to ripple because it's already happening for me at least. Like it started off with just my ideas, right? But then as I post more comics and I read the, the comments that people are leaving, like you have no idea how much joy it gives me when, um, for example, I, I did that comic about the group photo, how there there always seems to be one guy who's like an ax murderer. He always has like this super stern face, yeah. like Vanderlei Silva, just like ready to kill people. And everyone else is smiling. <laughs> like I got such a kick from the comments from that because I saw people just like tagging their friends and, and going like, this is you. <laughs> it's like, look, Hassel, this is you. And like, I think in, in most other contexts that would, that would be kind of weird to say to somebody. Yeah. But I think like, the fact that I posted a comic and it made them comfortable enough to call out their friends. <laughs> and, you know, that like that that's super fun for me. And, yeah, I, so I, I hope to to kind of involve um, fans a little bit more and, and kind of build off of that. No, that's perfect. Like, if you're going to make a community, you know, like reach or have a good fan base, you always have to reach out to them and talk to, talk to the fans. But... <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh, and actually, on, on that same comic, uh, a really funny thing that happened was um, someone DM'd me, and he he sent me a photo. He's like, "Dude, this is exactly uh, what what's happening at my gym." So he sent me a picture of him with his teammates, and it was crazy because it was the same exact number of people that I drew in the comic, and in the same exact composition. Like the axe murder was in the same spot. Holy shit! It's <laughs> like, oh, I'm hitting on something here. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's uh, the jokes and everybody points it out for like they they imitate life for a reason or life imitates art or whatever. You know, it's like the vein of that you're tapping from for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is like it it is what it is. You know, it's there's a Mm -hmm. lot of it. You know, the axe murderer guy you talk about and (laughs) just everything. And I think it's really awesome. And um, where can everybody find you? for your comics, for social media, for everything? Where can they find you? So the best place to go would be my Instagram, so at Immortal Choke. And I just set up a Patreon. Um, so if you go to patreon.com slash Immortal Choke, uh, you can go there. Uh, you can help support me. And what I'm trying to do with that is actually, if you if you do back me, I'm going to start. There's different tiers, but depending on which one you choose, I'm going to start... Um, 
drawing from that pool of people who back me and I'm going to actually draw them in the immortal choke style. Wow. You know, I'll be posting that so people can be drawn in that style. And then there'll be another tier where I'm going to actually um, put you as a character in the comic. So check out the Patreon. <laughs> I was say, shit, that's incentive enough for people to, to support you right there. And be part yeah, of I, I just want to involve people more. It's, it's fun for me, you know what I mean? No, I think it's great, man. And um, uh, before we uh, finish up this episode, is there anybody you'd like to thank, give a shout out to, like anybody? So the floor is yours. Go nuts. Yeah, man. I mean, I have to give the biggest thanks to my wife. Um, maybe she should have harassed me a little bit harder <laughs> a while ago to start the comic, but no, like, um, she she has an insane sense of humor, um, and I draw a lot from that, and she always supports everything I do, so big shouts to her, and then also to Michael Jen at Smash Gyms and all my teammates over there, um, because, I mean, that's the last two years, that's, that's where a lot of this content comes from, you know what I mean? So that and then yeah in my current gym at charles gracie because that's where all the future stuff's going to be coming oh, from yes. and i can't <laughs> i can't wait to see what the future stuff looks like and yeah man I'll tell oh you. and thanks to you for for having me on today <laughs> anytime man anytime yeah. i was i was laughing when you said that oh my wife should have harassed me a little harder it is kind of fun. like you know similar like in a similar sense with me as well yeah she should have been a little meaner and told me to do what I sh- do what I want to do instead of like wait for somebody I've, I've known only for like a few weeks to give me advice. They always know. To. They yeah. just always know. <laughs> so I just listen to what she says now and it, you know, makes life easier as well. Does she train too? Did you get her into it? Um, so she wanted to train. She kind of is easing into it. Mm-hmm. Um, she had, um, jaw surgery. So one of the big things she was worried about was before jaw surgery, going into the gym and getting her braces like um like ruined like all that work for uh pretty much they readjusted her jaw so like going into oh, the wow. gym and getting her braces like you know jacked up from i don't know like a good face crusher or whatever a good shoulder of justice and then you know she has like a year recovery afterwards before she can like not like she's crippled or anything it's just they want to be sure with the uh, the healing to make sure everything's good on the job before she jumps in and like lets people punch her in the face or cool. she's ma- she mainly trains kickboxing which is great I'm glad she's doing something I'm not not like jazzercise or like what is it like Tybo like legit kickboxing so she is training but like um she doesn't wow. spar but she's training something that makes me happy so she at least has a little knowledge I do want her to have some jujitsu experience but I'm biased you know yeah. Well, good luck with that, and I hope she, I hope she does get into it. I appreciate that, man. So, mm-hmm. once again, Billy, thanks for coming on the show, and I had a good time talking about this. And I can't wait to see all these uh, these new comics coming out, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Anytime. It was fun. And mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Big Jiu Jitsu Show, member of the Pod Bros Podcast Network. Go to podbros dot com and find yourself another episode or another podcast you want to listen to, and go visit our. Uh, website obviously bjjshow.com buy a new shirt the plain jujitsu shirt will be out by the time this airs you need to buy some of them it's the only jujitsu shirt you need and once again thanks to our sponsors trap and roll soap company tape armor pr performance and angry joe coffee i'm rob and we'll catch you guys next time